everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tifa and today we are going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. I'm sure like everybody else you have been waiting for this movie to come out ever since its Japanese release on December 24th and now it is finally out worldwide. I went into this film as a huge fan of the Jujutsu Kaisen series, the anime and the manga, but I specifically have not read Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, especially since I knew that they were making this movie, so I kind of wanted to judge the movie kind of based on no prior knowledge of that storyline that they are showcasing. Of course I do have prior knowledge of the Jujutsu Kaisen series and what happens in it, but the storyline that happens with Yuta specifically I didn't really know too much about before going and seeing this film. Now that this film is out worldwide, I can finally give you guys my review on the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. So, firstly I found the movie to be quite enjoyable, much like the Jujutsu Kaisen anime, there's a lot of fun little moments and great little jokes as well. I found the characters really enjoyable and I really did appreciate them bringing that kind of humour into the film as well. Also, just as an anime fan, I do think that this is a really really fun film and no matter what is good or bad about it, I think that if you're a fan of anime or Jujutsu Kaisen, you're just gonna enjoy this no matter what. <laughs> in comparison to other anime films, as in films that come from an anime franchise rather than like Studio Ghibli or anything like that, I think that this is a pretty great film. I don't think it is the best um, kind of anime film there is. I do prefer a few others over this one, but it's not bottom tier or anything like that. There are some really bad anime films out there, <laughs> but I do think that this is well above average and they did a good job of kind of giving the audience something more. Films like Naruto Ninja Clash of the Land of Snow uh, no Game No Life Zero and Demon Slayer Mugen Train are all pretty great anime kind of spin-off films that I really enjoy that don't mess up the timeline of an anime as well. It can be very very irritating when there is an anime film and it's supposed to be within the timeline so then the timeline of like the anime TV show so if you don't watch the film then you're missing out on that. Uh, at least, you know, Demon Slayer did that kind of like arc for people that didn't go watch the movie. So, you know, um, I do think Jujutsu Kaisen follows that type of thing as it fits within the storyline, but I don't think it's a necessity to watch it. Although I do think movies like that Naruto movie, uh, No Game No Life Zero, and uh, Demon Slayer, You Can Train, all can work as a standalone film, which is what I particularly like about them. No Game No Life Zero, you go into it, you don't even really have to have prior knowledge to No Game No Life because it's set before No Game No Life. There's of course a few easter eggs and stuff which is cute and fun, um, but you don't really need to know any prior knowledge. The same with Naruto, they basically explain the little bits and pieces and you already know from the title that they're ninjas. It isn't a very complex story, but they develop it really well. <laughs> and it's the same with the Demon Slayer movie, which I think is surprising how much you can get from just the movie if you haven't seen the series itself. Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is almost there in that regard, but I do think there are a few things that just kind of weren't as explained, especially since, I mean, as a Jujutsu Kaisen fan, we all know that <laughs> the whole uh, Jujutsu sorcery thing, there's a lot of things that we actually kind of don't know or don't follow along with. There isn't a set out law that we absolutely know. There's like a very basic premise and it kind of spins off every which way from there. And I think that in the film they don't really explain too much about it, which is fine, but it doesn't really work as well as a standalone because of that. 
but as a Jujutsu Kaisen fan or someone who knows about Jujutsu Kaisen, you can go into it, watch the film and have a lot of fun because you do know it's about some sort of Jujutsu, some sort of like sorcery. There just isn't much explained about that. The school is kind of explained, but also kind of not. And they kind of, they get away with it by being like, you know, Gojo is this dumbass <laughs> sensei who doesn't really like to explain things, which is fine. And Yuta goes into it not really knowing what the heck is happening. So they kind of get away with it. They needed to explain a little bit more. So people who were just watching Jujutsu Kaisen for the first time, through this film would, you know, get to know a lot more about it, if that makes sense. I appreciated the way they brought in Ghetto slash Gojo's story as well. I think that it obviously works really well with uh, Yuta's story and they did say that they needed to extend the time instead of just having solely Yuta's story they needed a little bit more which is why they pushed that story into it a bit more which I think is really great and it works but I also feel like it was a little bit jumpy in between like it was kind of not the first decision when it came to the plot like they they we know that they did definitely write out the Yuta storyline first and then tried to weave in Ghetto and Gojo's storyline as well which is fine <laughs> but it can feel a little jumpy sometimes and obviously there's a fair few flashbacks and all those kinds of things so I feel like the way that the plot goes is a bit back and forth and a bit jumpy not as smooth as I would have liked it to be and I feel like they could have pushed out a lot more complexities of these characters and the storyline, especially when introducing Ghetto's character. Of course, he is set up as the bad guy. He is the bad guy of the series and of, <laughs> of the movie. But there is, in the manga, I feel a lot more complexity in the way he thinks. And obviously we know that as manga readers because of what happened with Gojo, which isn't shown in this film and isn't shown in the anime, it's just in the manga, what happened previously well before this, so I'm not going to spoil that for you guys. And we know that eventually he came to this thought of mind and the way he speaks about humans I feel differs slightly. It's, it's a very slight thing and maybe that's just the English translation in the anime film that has kind of lost that, which is probably, it's a, it's a possibility, you know, um, with the subtitling that some of the essence isn't there. And of course in manga, they can kind of show you and tell you a little bit more. I just wish there was more complexity in the characters. Personally, um, as much as I enjoyed the film, I felt like it could have been so much more epic Demon Slayer Mugen Train was just epic. It, it felt like a cinematic film, whereas I feel like Jujutsu Kaisen Zero was just missing a little bit of something to bump it up from like an A tier to an S tier film when it comes to anime films. There was something that just needed to be pushed a little bit more to make it more epic, I guess. Maybe even because there is that fight sequence at the end that's like, I guess, Ghetto's first attempt at war. That could have been larger. Even Yuta's fight with Ghetto could have probably been extended a bit more or pushed the boundaries of animation a bit more, although those were animated very, very beautifully and very well done. I just feel like it needed something more. So when it hits that final end of the kind of battle of where they needed to be, it felt more climactic. I just felt like it was just missing a little something and I can't put my finger on it. So if you guys feel the same and you know what this film is missing, let me know down below. I would love to know. Other than that, I loved seeing these characters together. Learning about the first years before they become second years in the anime was really cool. In the anime, they do briefly mention Yuta, who is someone that Megami looks up to, who is a second year. And yeah. <laughs> Overall, I really, really did enjoy the film. I thought it was a lot of fun. As much as I have some critiques about the film or some things that I wish 
were a little better or would have wanted more of or slight changes I guess. The film was enjoyable, it was definitely a good film and I do recommend that you guys go watch it. I would I'm not really a fan of rating things out of 10 or anything like that, but I'd probably give it a 7.5 out of 10. It's not quite in that S tier, but definitely in that A tier for me. If you guys liked this review and would like to see me talk more about Jujutsu Kaisen, as I am a very big fan of Jujutsu Kaisen, please give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Also, I've moved house, so I'm very sorry that my shelves are kind of bare. I've put my manga into like alphabetical order and now I have so much more space for stuff because I just want these shelves to be manga. So I guess look forward to that in the future. <laughs>